Today I'm gonna to share with you 16 detailing tips that you need to know to keep your car looking great. So tip number one is if you don't have a garage, you can still detail your car. There's a lot of coin operated car washes or drive through car washes where they have free vacuums or if they're not free, they're fairly economical and they're strong vacuums that'll be able to accomplish any job that you encounter. The other thing is if you're trying to wash your car, if you have to go through a drive through car wash, it's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. There's also the bays that you can drive into where you can actually bring your own buckets, your own wash mitt, your own soaps, and instead of using their bristle brush that's attached to the wall, you can just use the pressure washer option and then your own soap. So that's another way you can do it so you can still get that hand wash that's scratch free, but if you don't have a garage, you can still detail your car. The other thing they have too is sometimes there are the uh, carpet floor mat cleaners where you can just put them in and they kind of suck them through and they scrub them for you. That is also available at some of them. So you kind of have to search around to find the best option for you, but it is a great opportunity to keep your car clean and detail it fairly easily. Detail and tip number two is the jams, the hood, and then also the gas location, the gas cap. All of those spots typically get missed and using just an APC or a degreaser or even just a plain old soap from when you're washing your car, you can either pressure wash those areas off. If they're overly dirty, you can just spray a little APC, let it dwell for about 30 to 60 seconds, pressure wash it off. And if there's not a pressure washer available, just using a wash mitt or a hose and detailing brushes ensures that those areas get completely cleaned. Tip number three is how to clean your headliner. This is a common missed spot. It's also incredibly hard to film and show you how to do it. But for the headliner, if you have a car that's got some spots that you know spill drinks or something splashed up on the ceiling, using just a diluted APC, you know, on your bristle brush, just spray a little bit on your brush, agitate that spot, and then a microfiber towel to kind of dab and soak it up. You don't want to be overly aggressive with scrubbing it or rubbing it because that headliner fabric is glued to essentially a piece of fiberboard or some sort of material, and it's just glued to the ceiling. And if you've ever had a car long enough, you can see that droopy headliner effect that happens over time. Um, there are some opportunities where you can use a extractor, but I feel like that's a little too aggressive. If I need to be aggressive on the headliner, I will use a steam cleaner just because it will not overly saturate it, but the heat and then also the little bit of liquid that gets ingested into the ceiling material is minute enough that you can use a microfiber towel to then scrub it clean and dry it off. Tip number four is when you are extracting or cleaning any carpet inside your vehicle, or if you have a moisture problem from going to the pool or you know something spilled, dry it out. That's the biggest thing that you can do because one, it'll have mold, it'll have a smell that's nasty depending on what the drink is. Um, for me, whenever I extract an entire car, I have two small box fans, and the main goal is you're trying to create airflow across it. Like if you ever had your carpets clean inside your house, they set a box fan, tell you to open your windows, and you're just trying to move air around because as that air moves across the surface, it'll dry it out, pull that water out of the that fabric itself to the top, and then dry it out as well. So constant airflow is the biggest thing when it comes to drying carpet. And whenever I do a full carpet or a full seat, I typically try to let it sit for eight hours before giving it back to a customer so it has that opportunity to completely dry out. Tip number five is clean your glass the easy way, but there are reach handles that allow you to get all the way into the front of your windshield or in the rear glass on like a coupe or sedan where it's hard to get that rear window. The reach tools help with making it so you're not like contorting yourself too much. It allows you to get into the corners really well. What I like to do is take a clean microfiber towel, spray my glass cleaner on that so it doesn't overspray on the dashboard, wipe it down and get as much of the dirt off as possible, and then have a fresh microfiber towel that then what I do is then clean it one more time with spray, but a little bit less, scrub it again, flip that towel over, and then dry it. Detailing tip number six is stay tuned in. And by that, I mean put on some music, crank up your favorite tunes, listen to podcasts, listen to anything that'll kind of keep you in the groove of getting the job completely done instead of just doing one or two spots and then moving on to the next thing or getting distracted. Uh, for me, I always like listening to podcasts or punk rock or honestly anything, country music. Country music's the easiest way to kind of get zoned out and just chill and kind of fluid with the process. But music, in some way, shape, or form, whether it's earbuds or speakers, definitely crank up the tunes. Detail and tip number seven is the smell good stuff. Make your car smell like you want it to. And for that, I actually have been using a product on my personal vehicles called Drift. And Drift is a air care product for your car. They also have it for your home. And the materials are all sustainable and their scents are made from natural fragrance oils. 
And the cool thing is they're actually fairly economically cheap and they have a subscription service where every 30 days you get a new refill. <clears throat> And the new refill is usually a monthly cent that's a cent of the month and it's a limited edition but you also have the opportunity to go on their website and modify that if you want to stick with a cent if you want to change it up from what they're automatically selecting and they last 30 days so it's a perfect timing perspective so if you have an air freshener and you need to change it out you don't even have to worry about it because a lot of times for me if you have an air scent in the car after about a week or two you know your nose kind of gets acclimated to the smell and it's not as strong this way, if the scent changes every month, you're always getting that kind of refresh of your nostrils, if you will. Um, so that is why I like to use it, especially because of the fact that they use sustainable products. It's made from wood. And the one that I actually am liking right now is called Teak. It's got that musk, amber, pepper, you know, cedar smell. And I love to do woodworking. So any fresh cut wood type smell is awesome in my opinion. So what I want you guys to do is you want to try out Drift is make sure you use my coupon code STOFFER35 for 35% off at Drift. It's less than $6 for your first month and it's a great opportunity to try out a really nice product that really helps make your car smell awesome. Tip number eight is to dress your tires entirely. So when it comes to putting an exterior dressing on the outside face of the tire, typically you take your applicator or your spray and you're applying it to the tire tread on the face so it has that nice shiny black clean fresh look. Um, typically what I like to do is once it's on and applied, roll the car back like three feet so that bottom part of the tire that's on contact with the uh, concrete is now at the top. So that way you can make sure it's completely covered there too so you don't have like a bald spot or a piece that you missed. Detail and tip number nine is dilution ratios. This is a question I get all the time about what is 10 to one or five to one ratios. And all that means is, is my products that I sell at foxclean.com like the APC, is already a little bit diluted. It's more like a five to one, but it's a stronger product. Um, if you don't need a super strong product, if you don't have a ton of dirt and you don't want all that foam that gets generated from a really dirty piece, if you don't need that, all that cleaning power, take an extra bottle, fill it halfway up with water and fill the rest up with uh, APC. That essentially will create a 10 to one dilution ratio. It's best for easy cleans, you know, just a standard maintenance clean. So you're not using a ton of product, so you save money on keeping more product in your shelf. And also you have a cleaning power that is um, applicable for the job. Detail and tip number 10 is your wheel wells and liners. So you've cleaned the wheel, you've cleaned the exterior, but the wheel well where the suspension, the brakes, and then also where the tire flicks up all that crap from going down the road on, commonly gets missed or if it does get hit with a pressure washer it's still dirty and it still has a ton of dirt so i have dedicated brushes that i like to use to scrub those liners spray on your wheel cleaner inside there as well so that way when you scrub it it's already been saturated and loosened up some of that dirt and then just rinse it off and when it comes to your tire dressing if you're super finicky if you have a high-end car and you want to keep that area sparkly clean take your tire gel or whatever spray on sealant that you use for your paint and you can spray it in there as well to kind of give it more of that rich dark plastic you know black plastic look or if it's a carpet fiber interior um, fender liner it'll also make that brighter as well detail and tip number 11 is carpet dye and this is something that i'm going to be showing in an upcoming video um, it is something that especially with lighter tan color carpets is more prominently an issue with stains because tan carpet if stains and dirt sits too long you're never going to get it fully back to the original look and with black or gray or darker colored fabrics um, and carpets you will get some fading over time just from wear and tear so a product that i like to use and i can recommend is rit rit carpet dye is a great you know option where if your carpet's completely clean it's completely dry you mix this stuff up and then you can kind of spray it on use a brush to kind of spread it around and agitate it in all of the fibers and then let that dry um, they have tons of different colors you can pick it up pretty much anywhere it's cheap it's easy to use and uh, i would just recommend wearing rubber gloves so that way your hands don't turn whatever color you're trying to dye your carpet detail and tip number 12 polish your exhaust tips in chrome and this goes for chrome plated bumpers as well Mothers makes a um, mag and aluminum polish that I highly recommend. It's a great product. It's super easy to use. If you have a large chrome bumper, you can even get away with using a dual action polisher and a step one polish because all you're trying to do is remove that oxidation or material that's on the surface of that chrome and clean it up and remove it from the surface so it's back to its shiny, shiny self. And when it comes to exhaust tips, 
just take a microfiber towel and some of that mag aluminum polish on there and then just scrub that exhaust tip and it'll remove all of the like the deposits from the carbon uh, from the exhaust and make them look like new again. Detail and tip number 13, the engine bay. Now, people get scared when it comes to cleaning the engine bay. The biggest things you have to worry about is don't just take a hose and drain it all over your alternator or your battery. I like to disconnect the battery. I take a plastic bag, grocery bag or whatever, and just tape it around your air filter or wherever the air comes in from your car. Um, most cars nowadays have all that ducted underneath the car or some way, shape or form where water doesn't become a problem. And then just put a plastic bag over your alternator. And when you're cleaning your engine, make sure it is cold, make sure it's not hot for obvious reasons. Plastic bag on hot parts does not make sense. And also water spots will be a very big problem on a lot of the components if it's extremely hot or fresh. So if it's cold, spray in water, you know, just spray your degreaser, spray your foam cannon all over the engine bay, use brushes and you know, really greasy spots, and then just take your pressure washer and rinse it off. I've never had an issue doing this. There's a lot of people that say they don't as well. I can't guarantee that obviously, but for me personally, I've never had a problem. And lastly, when it comes to under the hood or the engine bay, clean the backside of the hood. Just take your pressure washer, rinse it off, take your wash mitt, scrub it down, rinse it off like you would do the exterior paint. So that way the underside of the hood is good as well. Detail and tip number 14 is don't get behind on your maintenance cleaning. And by maintenance cleaning, I mean every time you go pump up your car with gas, take out the trash. If you're driving by a car wash place, like I said earlier, where they have free vacuums, just pop in real quick and vacuum your floor mats and get any of the trash while you're at it out too. Staying on top of it makes it less overwhelming. And if you have a big job ahead of you, if you're looking at the car and you're like, man, this is going to take three hours, you know, that's where you get discouraged and you don't do it at all. So if you keep on top of it, continually clean it as you go, it's just like anything else, little steps make a big impact in the end. Detail and tip number 16 is seasonal care and protection. And by protection, I'm talking about making sure that paint has got some sort of wax, sealant, ceramic on it so it's protected from UV rays, protected from road grime and debris. It allows that paint to stay fresh longer and not deteriorate over time as fast. If you have not protected paint, the water doesn't beat as well, dirt sticks to it more, and it will break down that clear coat and then eventually break down that base layer of color. So keeping your car protected, and even if you have a ceramic coating or if you have PPF on your car, those all need to be cared for in specific ways to ensure that those coatings or um, protective layer maintain over time and last as long as possible before needing to be replaced. Same goes for waxes. There's a lot of easy products out there. Um, spray on ceramics are very easy to use where you wash your car, you dry it, spray on your ceramic, and then just spread it with a microfiber towel and you're done. It takes literally no time at all. I mean, for me to just do a spray on ceramic, it shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes to do the whole exterior. It's really quick, but most of those last three to six months. So your application times get spread out. So thanks to Drift for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out that link below. And then also on screen here is 16 detailing tips that I did about a year ago that are completely different from this one. So you can become a better detailer or a better car owner and keep your car maintained and well detailed. So click right here on screen and watch that video now.